Hey, what's good? I'm Kinell and this is Sinister Cinema where we get deep into the guts of classics and new releases from horror and exploitation cinema. Be sure to follow us at Sinister underscore cinema on the Twitter, at Sinister dot cinema on Insta. Yes, follow them things. Today we are talking giallos. Yes, giallos. Fuck it, I'm still not 100% sure of the pronunciation this day. It's that Italian subgenre that, if a lot of you aren't familiar, it's the roots of slasher films and the roots of a lot of interesting styles that we see throughout Hollywood to this day in terms of filmmaking. They, the name giallo literally comes from the Italian word yellow. Which, and it's because they came from these kind of paperback pulpy books with lots of sex and violence in them that got adapted. They all had yellow covers, so they're called giallos. So yeah, that's what they are. They range from, uh, what should we call it, the classy and artistic, like your barbers and some of your Argentos, to your downright sleazy. And today, I want to talk about the sleazy. Kicking off with Lucio Fulci's New York Ripper. What do you want? To dedicate a murder to you. Somebody called for you. Yeah, who? The guy with a strange voice. Said he'd call you back. He sounded just like a duck. Just like a duck? If the guy who attacked you is our friend who calls and talks like a duck, well... He's made his first big mistake. Yeah. Anyway, we've got all five boroughs alerted, and we'll also inform all the radio stations. Shouldn't be too hard to find a guy missing two fingers in his right hand. Hurry down, cop! <laughs> you don't think I'm going to hours to let you pinpoint me with your stupid tracing machines, do you? <laughs> the data and we'll wait till the next victim. So you think he'll do it again? Oh, yes. Lucio Fulci's New York Ripper from 1981. Oof, this is a grubby one. I mentioned it before when I was talking about the Full Moon app, but to go into a bit more detail now, this is one of my favorite Fulci films, and certainly, by anyone's standards, one of the nastiest. So nasty, in fact, it was on the video nasty list, but whereas I think like Zombie Flesh Eaters, City of the Living Dead, some of the Beyond, some of the various other members of the Gates of Hell trilogy have since been passed on course, New York Ripper remains edited to this day in the UK. You can't get an uncut version, officially, not on DVD at any rate. Fucking the film itself, as you'd guess from the title, concerns a sexually motivated serial killer in New York, killing all killing women in all kinds of ways. All of them very minging, 
very, it's a, it's a very misogynistic film in terms of its eye. We got one scene where a woman gets full on stabbed in the minge with a broken bottle. Yes, broken bottle in the minge. Multiple times, which that kills her. Whether that would kill her in real life, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe it could if you hit a particularly like a important artery or something, but that's not really relevant to what the film's like. Uh, the film itself could, the killer himself fucking uh, torments the police by phoning up and speaking like Donald Duck, making all kinds of quacking noises, which adds a surreal element. Some people really don't like this about the film. I do, because the killer is just the biggest cunt possible. And I mean, you're already a pretty big cunt when you're out there murdering women, aren't you? Now, as I say, this isn't available, this isn't available in a hard copy, uncut in the UK. I have got the Blue Underground version. The Blue Underground version from William Lustig's label is an imported Blu-ray. And uh, fucking that one is the uncut version. That's the uncut version in a good presentation that was originally released, featuring some like proper fucking razor blade through the nipple stuff that you can't see in a fucking legitimately released version in the UK. I say that this version is available in the blue moon section of the full moon app. Not the, uh, what should we call it, uh, not the prime add-on, the app. If you download the full moon app itself, you could see this version without importing this. If you do, if you're, uh, what should we call it, there is a better version of that on Blue Underground now. They got one of those Ultra HD jobs. Apparently it looks amazing. I haven't checked that out yet, I'm probably going to. There is a version you can see in the UK, and it's this one, the Shameless Fan Edition. Now, uh, what should we call it? This is quite an interesting one, because whilst it does have some bits that are still edited, razor blades with the nipples and all that, <laughs> all that kind of thing, still edited it out, it does restore some other footage, which uh, gives it a kind of similar runtime, and also makes it an interesting curio, because it's a different version. So, in that sense, because there isn't an uncut version of the Shameless Fan Edition, you could argue that there isn't really a definitive version of that. The Shameless version, also fucking pretty nasty for extras and all. There's uh, interviews with Lucio Fulci's daughter and all this, little booklet that comes with it. Very cool release. Now, the other day, uh, I'm in a bunch of Facebook groups, uh, you might have linked here for one, and one of them's about giallos, and someone posted, which is the cruelest, sleaziest giallo you have ever seen? And I went to comment New York Ripper, expecting a lot of other people to comment a similar thing, but they didn't. They commented another film, so I thought, I gotta check this out. So that's uh, what led me to Giallo a Venezia. Giallo a Venezia, Giallo in Venice, Mario Landi, 1979 I think, well let's just say the lads in those forums were not wrong at all. This is a fucking grimy one, a, a proper grubby, outright the 
fucking most extreme giallo I have ever seen. Now giallos are known for their sex scenes, they're known for their male gaze, their voyeurism. They are known for introducing big big kill scenes and fucking the idea of a body count movie which would like to develop into the slashy genre. They're known for that but this is the most extreme one of them I have ever seen. Which is quite a claim because I have watched a lot of this shit. Fucking sex scenes, there's a fucking lot of them. And a lot of rape scenes. A lot of it is to do with this uh, woman who, with a fucking cocaine addicted boyfriend, who's like just a raging fucking sex addict, man. My man's like some kind of fucking. He's, he's like Weinstein with fucking physical capabilities. Fucking, he ain't turning up to court on no Zimmer frame. And there's some fucking. And yeah, he's just pretty much raping her constantly throughout this fucking film. It's fucking wild. And as for the kills, they are uh, fucking. Well, they stand up today. There's a scissors in the machine, not a broken bottle this time. A scissors in the machine uh, that uh, fucking goes on a lot longer than Fulci's bottle in the machine. I thought that would be the grubbiest Giallo kill of all time. Apparently not. But it's worth noticing that that isn't even the fucking uh, bloodiest kill in this particular movie. Really. Fucking, there is one fucking scene involving a leg being cut off a sex worker. And it goes on for a very long time. With very, I, I would put it on a par with the, with the better examples of the guinea pig series. If you're not familiar with the guinea pig series, that's the, uh... The original torture porn really, over from Japan, Flower of Flesh and Blood and all that was uh, famously one that was reported to the FBI by Charlie Sheen after he was given a copy and mistook it for a snuff film. Because those films are literally just fucking dissection for of, of living people uh, throughout the whole of the fucking runtime. And uh, the fucking, they're, they're big among gore hounds. Gore hounds, I reckon if you're on that tip, you will be satisfied by this leg amputation in Giallo a Venice. Yeah, fucking, it's a pretty hard one to track down, but uh, fucking, I managed to find a, co a copy in Italian on YouTube and find myself some subtitles from somewhere else and work it out there. Fucking, how the fuck? I'd, I'd say try and find that fairly soon because surely that's going to be taken down. This shit is fucking minging, like. But yeah, it's powerful. Is it the better film though? Is it the better film? No, I'd say New York Ripper is comfortably the better film. But for years, what I've been saying, the fucking grimiest giallo, giallo, sorry, I always fucking pronounce it wrong, is New York Ripper. I got to say my answer has now changed. The answer is now giallo in Venice. So yeah, that's a look at a couple of extreme giallos. I'd urge you to check them out. Uh, what you call it? Be sure to subscribe to us on the socials at sinister underscore cinema on the Twitter at sinister dot cinema on uh, uh, Instagram. Fucking hit the like button, leave a comment if you have any other. If you've got, if you know a more Mingan Giallo, I'd encourage you, uh, Giallo. I'd encourage you to tell me. Please do. I'm fucking fascinated if there's a uh, worse one than what I've seen today, and. Yeah, yeah, if you've seen these films, let me know your opinions on. Hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'm Kinell, this has been Sinister Cinema. Safe.